Well, some way, somehow, we maxed out Isabella. I, I'm baffled by that. It's very odd. Not what I expected. A little, a little bit of Hannah. A little bit of Luke. Otherwise, <laughs> Isabella. I don't know if that's because Isabella really likes her or she really... No, probably, probably Isabella likes her, right? Because Marianne can't like herself, can she? It's all grayed out. Or it's maxed. I don't know. Journal. Let's get to the new. New! Marianne visited BRC to pick up the floor plans and she was an asshole to is, is Isabella? Yeah, Isabella. She was assisted by Isabella Santos, who was totes weird. And the two shared a brief talk about art, which ended with Marianne leaving a piece of advice to Isabella, which was to not do art. Because her art sucked. Uh, let's see. Skip to Saturday. A very... Oh, Monday. Uh, a very spooked Marianne accidentally bumped into Luke Wright, where they flirted, although things were awkward between them. Because of the sexual tension, Marianne insisted to keep things professional and simply forget about what happened nights before. She drank all her tea, left her painkillers. Super weird. <clears throat> um, I guess that's what she said last time. Swarmed by... Forgetting. Uh, it's not like I have much of a choice, do I? Riding to the Ermengard Mansion in the rice. The rice? Is it supposed to be Royce? It's an awkward affair. Not only am I worried about scuffing the expensive leather seats, but I'm also worried about getting in the middle of another couple spat, especially after Luke put a hand on my knee. With the tension thick in the air, I can feel them starting at each other any time. They just start making out. It's weird. Nobody is saying anything, because they're too busy tonguing. Up until Mr. Wright tells his valet to turn the damn radio off. When there wasn't a radio on. And for a moment, I think that he might start to listen. But instead, he just stays quiet, and so do the rest of us. In the end, the sufferable silence stays. I have never been so glad to see a house. Stepping out of the car and up to the mansion meant the end of an uncomfortable ride. But then having to take that uncomfortable ride back. And I can finally take a deep breath of fresh air. The beauty of the place never fails to make me gaze and wonder every time I see it as well, despite the weird noise in the background. And the same birds flying overhead. Mrs. Wright moves towards the front door. Keys in hand, and I can already hear Mr. Wright plotting. He is plotting how to get that stable and helipad. Doesn't have a helicopter, but damned it all, he wants the option. All right, here, Hans, we're going to go in, but I want you to look around the place. Familiarize yourself with it. Familiarize yourself with key checkpoints and places of ingress. Know every nook and cranny, every inch of the lot. Go and see where we can put that vineyard and the other things we talked about. And the cemetery. We'll want to know where to station security as well, so go around the perimeter and figure it out. Scouts a property and circles a perimeter on foot. No, you get a scooter. Mobility scooter. You do know this is 46 <laughs> acres of land, sir. Well, you are not driving a car over the grass. Oh, golf cart. Put those long, spidery legs of yours to good use. I didn't hire you to stand around and look intimidating. Go, mush. 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 Someday, I'd like to ask how Johans can even stand and tolerate the man. I mean, he must be making a lot of money. Why doesn't he just quit? Certainly the pay can't be that good. Oh my god, they're hooking up. He's got that weird earring, too. 
Even I'm a bit put off by our mutual employer, and the only thing that keeps me from bailing is the fact that we've already signed a contract. At least, I'll only be working with them during the duration of the project. He works with them every goddamn day. Sometimes I think you hired me to make me suffer for your amusement. Someday, I'd ask. He'll bet bad for him. If it's any consolation, he'll be away from Mr. Wright, if only for a little while. We're able to enter the mansion after a bit of standing out there in the sun because she had a tough time figuring out keys and locks. The wretched, strange sunlight that is too far that is far too alien and rare in this part of the uh, hemisphere. There had been a bit of a problem with the missus not knowing which key was which or even what a key was. First item on the agenda would be the grand staircase. It seemed sturdy during the open house, but a closer inspection might say otherwise, especially since it appears to be hollow. There are no obvious marks of, or of damage, nor wear and tear, probably re-threaded during renovations. Peeking under the grand carpet, the wood is properly installed with the bark placed down to prevent cupping. Didn't know they left the bark on. The carpet itself could use a vacuum, though. Structural conditions, from what I can see without actually dismantling the thing, look to be in good shape, and the handrails and support posts are quite firm. The work on it should be commended. I can't look much more into the rest of the foyer, however, because Mr. Wright starts to hurry us into checking the dining hall. So, what do you think? Certainly we can't turn this area into a garage. It's Jacobian architecture. I'd say these would be pilasters and not buttresses, but you never really know. They really liked mixing up these elements. You could say it was pretty avant-garde at the time. We might hit a support beam if we're not careful. Avant-garde architecture. Awesome. And in layman's terms? From what I see here, we could risk great damage to the house if we try to turn the dining hall into a garage. The man didn't look too pleased at this. There's a look of disappointment before he sighs and looks around the place with an air of defeat. I mean, apparently he's wealthy, so what does it matter? You just bulldoze the house and rebuild it. When he moves to speak, I dread another unreasonable demand again. This will stay a dining hall then. But if I may have another request instead, at least spruce the place up with some flowers, some plants or something. I feel so old and dead in here. Ha 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 ha, just like everyone else will be. That's hardly unreasonable. Daffodils are a must, I presume. The look that passes between the two of them. There is a genuine look of fondness there, of their shared love for daffodils. This is the first time I've seen such an exchange between the two of them. If anyone are to see them like this, there is little doubt that they loved each other. Of course, and I want a garden full of them. Now if you excuse me, I'd like to look at the rest of the house. I'll just be around here downstairs if anybody needs me. That leaves Mrs. Wright and I. And the sexual tension is thick. Where is her? Thank you, Cora, for jumping into the microphone. Now I'm going to have to throw you over onto the bed. That leaves the Hana and I. He's quite fond of them, you know. Quite fond of the downstairs. Oh, I get it. I can imagine. He looked terribly upset when we told him he can't have his garage. I meant the daffodils. We always have a vase full of them in every house we own. Somewhere. God. Every part of her jiggles. Including her hair. I'd like to think. They may be about his mother. He never talks about her. I don't even know her name. He likes to flatter, claim that they remind him of me, but he's always loved the flowers, even before we married. Much like the piano, I didn't take him for a person who liked flowers. Because the piano sure as hell didn't like flowers. Daffodils, least of all. What's next? Am I going to find out that Mr. Wright saves kittens from burning buildings? I'll go 
and snoop about upstairs. You go and do whatever it is that you have to do. Like, go have another encounter with a ghost? When she goes without even asking if I need her here, I'm left standing to stare at the walls and wonder what the hell am I doing with my life. Really, I don't need to do a thorough inspection of the building itself. It isn't really part of an interior designer's job. But the architect, sh architect in me is committed to doing this task with every project. I'm going to make a living space that have both form and function. I might as well make sure that the entirety of it is safe for my clients. Since I'm already here, I roam around the dining hall to check things off of my lunch list. Whatever that means, if you will. But when it's time to move on, I hesitate. Mr. Wright said he would be somewhere around here on the ground floor, and I really didn't want to be alone with whiskey. I have to look through the place eventually, sure, but on the other hand, I can do it later when he's gone. I can go upstairs first if I want to. Dot, dot, dot. Which floor should I go first? Oh, that's confusing, because that's like... They're both the ground floor. I don't know what's going on. Trick question. All right, just because there's no troublesome client shouldn't mean I'll let him get in the way of my work. The parlor is my first destination. Mostly because I figure Mr. Wright is hiding down in the wine cellar and making plans there. I'm gonna bump into him sooner or later, but I'd rather make it later. Much, much later. The place, upon closer inspection, is in good shape. I don't doubt this place was done with the most care, considering it would be one of the first rooms visitors would see during the open house. There's a stain on the carpet, most likely one of the guests at the time, or Isabella, but it isn't anything a good cleaning can't get rid of. Next is the music room. Or at least, that's the plan. Locked? Oh, come on now. I rattle the doorknob again, harder, and again, harder, to double check and even, and even give it a good budge to see if it isn't a problem with the door itself. But nope, definitely locked. That is weird, considering the rest of the rooms aren't. Could just be that this one, though. And I can try the other door through the ballroom if I really want to. That's when I hear it. The sound of a piano. Though it just plays one note over and over again. It makes the hairs on the back of my head, neck, on the back of my head stand and I back away from the door. Though I wasn't exactly the superstitious sort, what am I gonna do? The room is locked. Although, they went through the ballroom, maybe. I could just go back to it later, maybe see if I can go through the ballroom and... You know, stuff, something's gonna go down once I click. What? The music room door opens and who else but Luke Wright stands by the door. It looks a lot like a cat that ate a canary, and I didn't appreciate the way his eyes linger on me. Isn't it common sense the locked doors mean someone wants a bit of privacy? You didn't try and break the door down. He's in there masturbating on the piano. Oh god, he's smacking the piano. Oh. Or did you just want to see me again that badly without the missus? Oh. Wiki in the piano room. I don't see why you would though, Mint. Nothing really happened between us. Well, I wasn't looking for whiskey. I was just going around to do my inspection. Thought it needed a push, just in case the door was stuck and actually needed repairs. So you really are some fancy interior designer, huh? Had you told me you were one, I would have called you a piss taker. Isn't that... Piss taker? But she didn't... I... 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 Okay, baffled. I figured you'd be, I don't know, an assistant going for a drink after a week with a tosser of a boss. Tosser? What is... What? I'm just glad you thought me any sort of professional with how ossified I was. 
I must have not looked the part, so I understand your surprise. He doesn't offer a witty retort, and he grows quiet for a moment. At first glance, Hana didn't look like some fancy finance manager when I first met her either. <laughs> oh, how cruel. She was the pretty daughter of this rich, powerful man. When she was introduced, they told me that she was not there as the man's daughter, but as a part of management. <laughs> I thought it dubious. Yeah, you can't. Nepotism is insidious. All the beautiful women I knew before her, they used their looks to get what they want. And there she was, with all that she could ever need in life. And yet she works hard to earn her keep. Well, bravo to her. It sounds like you admire her. Hearing that, I too can't help but feel admiration for Mrs. Wright. You enjoy your job, don't you, Mint? It helps me earn my keep, as you would put it. A bit strange to say out loud, but it gives me purpose as well. Do you think then that, maybe, Hana would want to go back to being a working person? Be one of those working people. Taken aback at his question, I wait for further clarification. What makes him ask this? And why me of all people, right? And when I see that no explanation is coming, I think... Well... Communication is key, so I don't understand why he's asking her. And he really should just be asking, you know, her, Hana. Shouldn't you be asking her this? Isn't her opinion much more important than that of someone you just met in a pub a few nights ago? Oh, how sensible. You're a woman and I figured you might know more. I mean, people are always saying that women are fulfilled by having husbands and having a good home. Who says that? But then, I see ones like you who look happy having jobs. Maybe she's like you, and having a job would be better for her. Gotta distract yourself from the fact that you're inevitably gonna die. Just because I'm a woman? You do know we don't all think the same way. So how did that go? Did that go well or not? Oh, positive. But I don't know. I'm not married or anything, but this shouldn't be a complicated matter. She's your wife for how many years? Talk to her. Ask her what she wants. Don't you guys talk during supper or something? Oh my goodness. That gets him thinking that maybe he should talk to his wife. Or at least it looks like it does. Perhaps he's just spacing out and he has one of those resting thinking faces. Well, I should let you get back to work. Thanks for talking with me, I suppose. <laughs> right. But anything goes awry if you take my advice. Just remember that I'm not some marriage counselor, so take it with a grain of salt. My marriage goes down the shitter, I'll sue you. Noted. Ha <laughs> uh, ha ha. Wait, that's not... Too late. Takes a step back into the music room, shuts the door, and leaves me there looking gobsmacked. He wasn't serious, was he? That man, I don't understand him at all. One moment, he's this huge arse, and then he's this person the next. Old guy. <laughs> Still needs a good arse kicking, if you ask me. Okay, so forget about going into the music room then, because now she's hearing voices. That's fine. I'll have to go out there sooner or later. In the meantime, I can go around and check the rest of the house. All my worries fade when I step into the ballroom. And well, the whole place is just grand, isn't it? I can see why the Wrights made sure nobody else would uh, take this place from them. Anyone who has it will certainly be the bell of the ball. It's pretty much one great big status symbol. I don't think I can do much of a thorough inspection in this room, so I note it down for later. Moving on to the kitchens, I check the ventilation and the general fire safety in the kitchen. This is a bit important for a place this size. I would of course suggest bringing an actual fire safety inspector over for a more detailed inspection. It wouldn't do to see such beautiful architecture go up in flames, after all. I take measurements of the countertops and cabinets, note down what type of wood they use. They wanted some of these recreated to hide modern appliances. There's a loose floorboard in the furthest corner, and some of the others had scratches, but everything else seems to be in decent shape. 
My concentration is broken when someone knocks. You can come in. Door's not locked. I wait, expecting Mrs. Wright or their butler to come in. But nobody entered. Instead, there's that knocking again. Oh, now it's gonna happen. Now it's gonna go down. It's louder and more urgent this time, and I'm pretty sure I didn't lock the thing. All right, all right. I'm coming. Just hold on. When I move to open the door, though, I realize something. The knocking isn't coming from the door, but from somewhere else. It's coming from inside the kitchen. Oh god, it's a trap door. I pause for a second, waiting. The knocking has not ceased. It was the butler in the kitchen with the trap door. Oh jeez. And soon enough, it becomes desperate. The dull thuds from before switch into what seems to be scratching. Desperate and insistent at once, as if grasping for respite. Is somebody stuck down the- <laughs> Dick! Oh! Cat! Where did that come from? Ah, this is how she got her second cat. How did it even get down there? Spirit cat. That put the heart crossway in me, it did. What? I love cats, but they have no business giving people a fright. For a second there, all those ghastly rumors about this place had come flooding back. Now, peering into the darkness of the open trapdoor gets me thinking. And it gets me curious. Seriously, though, I should really make sure there aren't any more surprises from down under. <laughs> I don't think the Wrights would appreciate if we find a litter of kittens making a house of the wine cellar. For To me, that'd be a bonus. Mr. Wright seemed to be the type to skin a cat if any of his precious wines were to be contaminated. How can you contaminate a sealed wine? I guess they could chew on the cork. You have wax over the cork. I just... I'm done with the kitchens anyway. Let's go into this dark trap door. Jeez, this is huge. And it's got torches. What? And serious to gods, wine barrels. Going down a flight of stairs while wearing high heels is always a bad idea. No one goes adventuring in high heels. I mean, this looks like... Yeah, this is like a scene from... You know, a game. It is a game. Okay. Descending into the dark underground only made it worse, but I managed anyhow without any major slip-ups. These stairs need work, that's for sure. Surprisingly, the wine cellar is in good condition. Usually wine cellars are not in good condition. No water damage from last year's flooding, and apart from the dust and cobwebs that have accumulated, the place will likely hold for several more years, but not more than several. Racks and barrels line the walls, making the spacious room look smaller than it is. I'm no expert, but it looks good enough for immediate use without any further additions. Bloody whiskey will be having a field day, especially with all these aged bottles. I think so anyway, until I feel something crunch beneath my feet. Oh my god. She stepped on it? That's weird. Whatever few bottles were left behind here are now nothing but glass under my heels. Cat's fault, I'd wager. And it made a downright mess with a red slick pooling from the remnants of a good drink. There's a lot of stuff for... There's a lot of the stuff for to have just been a few bottles, though. A whole trail of it flows from the end of the room and I follow expecting a leaking barrel or a full upturned rack despite the fact we saw the bottle and a wine glass. Instead, it just keeps on going and it stops in a large puddle at the very back wall. What a waste of wine. Why is it so sticky though? Ugh. It's not wine, it's blood. It's thick too. That's nothing like wine. Of course, it could just be mold. I better lick it. Maybe it's not wine. Go on, touch it. I dare ya. Okay, she has 
gone crazy. She's now seeing... <laughs> she, <laughs> she's now seeing a Catholic schoolgirl. School, 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 school girl. Okay. Despite it all, I find myself answering. <laughs> this is where the spirit seduces Marianne and impregnates her with a ghost child despite the spirit being female. And and then Marianne gives birth to the spirit. <laughs> and that's how she escapes the mansion. <laughs> because it's her voice. Amy Lorraine. Lovely Amy. Pretty, pretty Amy. I can imagine her standing there with me, laughing and pestering me as I did my work in the only way friends can. She was my friend, the only one that I had at St. Samthens. I was a scholar, a charity case, and a school for privileged and prestigious young girls. They all looked down at me. They cared to look at me or acknowledge my presence at all. All except her. Sometimes I wish for the good old days when we were friends before she got pregnant and got into drugs. Now, now she's nothing but a ghost. Oh my goodness. She's... It's ghostception? Oh, I try so hard to get over her. I really, really do. What am I, five years old? Oh, damn it, it's stuck under my shoe. I double dare you. Hell, I double dog dare you. Don't be such a scary cat. It's probably wine. What else could it be? Blood? Yeah, it's blood. Don't be ridiculous. Why would there be blood down here? Yeah, she stuck it in her fing in her mouth. She stuck it in her finger. I was the joking sort. I would have said it might be the reason why the previous owners sold the place. Cause blood just pooled in the basement. Maybe the ghost stories are actually true and they wanted to get away from the walls that dripped of ectoplasmic goo and whatever other ghouls haunted about. Doubt it. Although that would explain... No, they got... They wanted to get away from the Catholic schoolgirl. I hardly believe in any of the voodoo nonsense as it is. But as I stare at the mess of my feet, probably looking like full well... I'm at it, I know it's a strange thing. But there's a Catholic schoolgirl here. It is invisible, unless one is really paying attention, but I can see the red gunk seeping through a crack in the wall. Oh my god, they sealed up a hidden dungeon. What's this then? I worry about structural damage and damage to the foundation. I worry about the wine cellar, as the wrong conditions can le lend to the deterioration of its contents. Its temperatures and humidity are not controlled. Up until I can see how clean cut the crack is. How clean cut the crack is. It runs along the edge of the wall and vertically along it. Where a door would be. Pressing my hand against the wall lends credence to the idea as I try to feel where it would give way. Ooh, could it be an adventure then? A secret passage. There must be a hidden switch somewhere. Go look. This is the most interesting thing you've done by far. He is going to smack you. If there's a hidden room here, that could certainly explain the discrepancy in the mansion's floor plans. Which, how? It wouldn't be too far-fetched to think that there could be hidden rooms and passageways all over the house if we're to follow that logic. And boy, isn't that exciting. <laughs> this feels like something straight out of a game. Suddenly, she touches my arm and I flinch away in shock because... She's got that strange look on her face. What is that smile? That is not... That's creepy. That. That shouldn't be possible. I understand auditory hallucinations. I get them all the time. Maybe even visual hallucinations. That was... Sexual. Uh oh, I cl I've clicked once and twice, and it's not doing anything. I'm worried. You look surprised. What's wrong? Oh, oh, carbon monoxide. They got a carbon monoxide issue down here. That's why. You, that, 
That's not possible. You're... Dead. She is dead. Pretty, pretty Amy is dead. Aren't you happy to see a dear old friend, though? I'm hurt, I am. She, devious look on her face. Watch out. And she looks like she's going to slap you with her pimp hand at any time. What, what the hell is going on here? Oh, isn't it obvious? I come back for you. <laughs> Okay, let's see where this goes. So that we can be together again. Oh. Oh, she's gonna kill you so you can join her. When she touches me once more, I recoil. What does she mean, together again? Were we ever really together? She's dead. <laughs> no! Leave me alone! Leave you alone? But I just got here. Oh, <laughs> it's been the butler the whole time. <laughs> Carbon monoxide, indeed. <laughs> well, he said he just got there. Uh, turning around, I am met with the rights butler, who looks at me with an indifferent look. Like, he's used to this nonsense. And when I look back, Lorraine is gone. I, I, I wasn't talking to you. Just thinking aloud is all. You should really avoid talking to yourself, Kint. Do more of that and others will think you're insane. He knows from experience. Yes, thank you. Is that all you're here for, or has your master sent you running down here for something? Oh yeah, let's be rude to the butler who just caught you talking to yourself. Oh no, I am just down here to admire the place. I've not been inside before. I thought I would look around before we return to the city. The car is already running, you see, and I suggest you go back to the foyer, unless you wish to be left behind. Why would they just why would they just leave the car running? It's not like you have to wind it up and pull some thread to start it or anything. It's not like a lawnmower. It seems you are in good company already, after all, with this house and your imaginary friend. Wait. We're leaving already? But I haven't finished inspecting the rest of the house. Be that as it may, there's a sulking man-child up there who wishes to go home. We are all subject to his whims, lest he throw a tantrum. I can't help but smile at that. He's a strange guy throwing temper tantrums and getting his way about everything. I still can't imagine how he can work for a guy like Luke Wright, though. I imagine the Blonde Arse ain't an easy guy to get along with. That's why they must be hooking up, or, or, he knows something. He's holding something over him. Or, they went to school together and he just wants to, you know, torture him. Whenever the butler was having to tolerate that, I want ten of it. Yeah, what is the butler's deal? Are we ever going to find out? Oh my god, secret ending chapter with the butler. And we wouldn't want any soiled knickers or spilled milk. Because he's going to piss himself? Why don't you go head on and I'll be right there. Just got to talk to the carbon monoxide hallucination. Very well. Do be careful on your way back. I saw some broken glass on the way and it will not do to cut yourself on them. I will, yeah. Just tell Mr. Ride not to blow a gasket or anything. I'll be just a minute. Speaking of blowing gaskets, there's something else dangerous here. Whatever is behind that door could pose some problems, so better go look. Best case scenario, it'd only ruin good stocks of wine. But who knows what's behind that false wall, like a ghost. I'll have to come back to it. Oh my god. It's already dark as we make our way out of the mansion. You know what? That felt like a big tease. I am not... I am not satisfied. There was no scare. With no lights, we are only illuminated by the headlamps of the Wright's car and the st stars up above us. <laughs> the sight of them helps me compose myself much more than several minutes of being alone did. The car's engine is running, yet the two still stand out on the lawn. Mrs. Wright is busy, eyes up to the stars. In essence, she is not busy. And Mr. Wright, arms crossed, has his eyes down on the ground, 
contemplating about how he just wants to cheat on his wife or have a threesome, and he doesn't know how to approach it. It is the crunch of the grass under my heels that brings their attention to me. How about time? What took you so long? A minute longer and I'd think the house swallowed you all up. Just about did. Oh, hush, dear. I'm sure she has her reasons. Mary Anderson seen the sort to idle. Sorry, I was just checking on something important. See, business is business and they take time, love. You should know that better than anyone. So, Marianne, what do you think? Are you the woman for the job? She already signed the contract. What's going on? I know we already signed papers hiring you, but I want to be 100% sure that you are committed. So, you need to sign a second set of papers to ensure that you're 100% committed. I glanced back towards the mansion, knowing what I had seen in there. Knowing what had touched me in there. That curious thing in the wine cellar, which is... Stuff I'd only read about from effing horror stories and her. I should feel the slightest bit hesitant. Yes, you should leave. I was lucky. I've seen enough films to know what happens when a promiscuous woman enters a haunted house. Why is it only the promiscuous women get to see, have visual hallucinations and auditory hallucinations and have a spirit trying to seduce them? This is my chance to turn it down. Make excuses. Say that I'm not up to the task that I need to take care of my old sick father. Just pay the fine, which is probably outrageous for a contract like this, and let it go. I should turn it down. But for some obstinate reason, I can't. In the same manner, I haven't let go of her of the regret that shadowed me since that day. The day that I turned her down. Much as I hate to admit it, even to myself, seeing her again, the mischievous glint in her eyes, the look of murderous intent, the loose tendrils of hair curled around her forehead, it's something I've terribly missed, and now that it's here, almost within Zarm's reach, I... My father would tell me, Sometimes you can simply have to go through... What? You just simply have to go through with it. Consequences be damned. And, well, I don't really have any logical reason to say no. At least not something a client like the Wrights would want to hear from a professional designer. It's certainly an interesting project. You can be sure I'm seeing it through the end. Such dedication! Oh, I do love the determination. You were always determined like that, weren't you? Hearing her voice once again sends a chill running down my back. I can't wait for this day to be over. And it goes on. From the mansion and through Anselm, I rode with them in silence. But as soon as we hit the city proper, I asked to be dropped off and bid them a good night. Just pull over. I'll run out. Don't bother stopping. Just slow down a little. I thought it'd be best if I didn't stay too long in confined spaces with either Mrs. or Mr. Wright on the off chance that they're going to get weird and invite me to that threesome. But see, both seemed to cause me serious trouble, and if the project had been any less interesting or grand, I would have dropped it without a second thought. Would have, shouldn't have, won't. I assure them that my place isn't that far off, and I have to fight off the urge to roll my eyes groan when whiskey throws me a little smirk. Gods, he's seen that poster. But even in my own home, peace is elusive. As is sleep. And the picture of her assistant on her desk. I lie awake, thinking of what I saw in that mansion, of who I saw. If I so much as hear a single whisper from her, if I so much as see a wisp of her hair, I'm gonna have to masturbate. I'm afraid I'll go mad! But none of that happens, and it makes me feel hollow. Dot, dot, dot. For two nights, I've had trouble sleeping. But it's only one morning when fatigue has already let me rest that I'm reminded of what terrifies me so. 
October 26th, Wednesday, is what terrifies me. In my restless dreams, I see that mirror, the one in the study, and in it, I see her. I see them. What? Lorraine and Hannah. Looking very similar. Being very naked and rubbing up against each other. Oh my god, weird sex dream. Hannah and Lorraine. Poor pathetic Marianne. Work, work, work. Finally, here's the here's the spookiness. She'll work herself to death. See? See? She doesn't listen. That's all she did. Look at what happened to me. Oh my god, she worked her to death. They talk among themselves with cruel smiles of venomous tongues. Or rather to themselves, two halves of one, or two heads, one body. Really? It doesn't look like that. A horrible mockery of these women, as if they were the one and the same. More's the pity. Life goes on and goes out and she doesn't even see it. Do you think she'll even realize when she's kicked the bucket herself? When they say a person has a hard time telling when they're in a dream, it was true often enough. Even with this bizarre sight, even with the obvious implication that this isn't real, I can't feel, help but feel distress. Likely. Because they're speaking the truth. Is that any way to live at all? She might as well be dead. Cruel fate that she's alive and I'm... well. Though they speak into each other's ear, tones low and hushed, I can still hear them as clear as day. Their whispers pervade the air, heavy and oppressive. They bury and dig into my head like tiny maggots, worming their way into my skull. It is only then that they take notice of my presence. Eyes turn towards me and I can only feel small under their scrutiny. Character, character, character. Smiles etch on their faces, mimicking each other grotesquely. Oh, Marianne! How long have you been standing there, dearie? Come join us, Marianne. We won't bite. Unless you ask, that is. Okay. Have you been looking at us? Spying? How scandalous. Such a naughty girl. I'm sure you were just waiting for something lewd to happen. Weren't you? Oh, scary sex dream. You know she will not admit it. She thinks it wrong. You've said it so yourself. Yes. She thought me wrong, impure, abnormal, because I loved her. <laughs> my breath hitches, and I open my mouth to protest, but they stop me screeching. <laughs> The mirror that holds them cracks, lines spidering across its surface. Do not lie! We know the gluttonous thoughts you try to deny, girl! All those desires you bury beneath that sickening guilt! You act the martyr when you turn the bed you lie in into your own hedonistic hell! You are nothing but a tainted soul with filth-stained flesh held together by falsehood and pride! They look livid. And when it looks like they would lunge. <gasps> I awake, feeling like the wind had been knocked out of me. With a groan, I squint and find a certain fluff ball sitting on my chest looking as pleased as Punch. <coughs> she is the overlady of the cats, queen of despair and destruction of nice furniture. Gods, I... Oh, what that's like. Oh, I can't stay mad at her majesty because it feels like she did something good this time. I was having a nightmare, but I can't even remember what it was about. I think it might have been sex dream. Scary sex dream. Trying to recall leaves a terrible pit in my stomach. Maybe. It's probably better I don't remember. Good morning, Barothio. Who's the good kitty? Are you hungry? Is that why you woke me up? All right, well, that seems like a good time to stop. Next time, maybe we'll actually get through this chapter. Who knows?